Hi guys, the webinar started. Welcome everyone. Uh, today our focus is uh, DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise plus UGCS for vertical surveying. Before we start this webinar, I have to highlight that we have over 1,350 1, registered to today's webinar, which is a quite a big number. And I do hope the content we are sharing today will be helpful for each of you. Uh, thank you again for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Irving. I'm a solution engineer in DJI Enterprise, and I offer technical support for European markets. And today I'm very delighted to have Roger and Christos as presenter with me. Roger, founder and CEO of Sora Drone. Roger, would you like to say hi to us? Hi, everybody. Yeah, and could you also introduce? <laughs> Uh, yes, I'm I'm geological engineer. I did a PhD about rock falls and the use of unmanned aerial vehicles in civil engineering and geological engineering. I am researcher and associate or part-time professor in the civil engineering school of Barcelona in the Technical University of Catalonia, and I am also the CEO and co-founder of Cerodrone Consultants Engineering. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Roger. And we got Christophs with us, UGCS product owner. Welcome. How are you doing, Christophs? Uh, thank you, doing great. Uh, yeah, so I'm uh, Christophs. I'm the product owner of EGCS, flight planning software here at uh, SPH Engineering. Um, I've been working with drones for now, you could say already about uh, 10 years. So, you know, a lot of exciting stuff has happened during this time, a lot of uh, developments. And yeah, so hopefully today we can share uh, some of uh, that uh, with you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Christophs. Okay, next uh, I will shortly share our agenda for today. First of all, I will briefly introduce the new feature of Mavic 3 Enterprise, which is published in this month. Then we will have Christophs as presenter to share UGCS solution. Then goes our main presentation from Roger to share with us how to do vertical surveying using Mavic 3 Enterprise and UGCS. And after all the presentations, we will have a Q&A time. Okay, just a little housekeeping before we get started. First of all, this webinar is being recorded and will be made available through a link later on to all the participants, but also to the people who registered but couldn't make it to the session. Second, after presentation, we will have a Q&A session to answer all the questions. So we invite you to drop all the questions in the question box, which we will take time to answer it. Okay, now without further ado, we will turn the time to first presentation. I will start to share my screen. Okay, Mavic 3 Enterprise new feature introduction. Okay, uh, uh, like welcome again, and uh, I would like to use this amazing opportunity to share with our partners about the new feature of Mavic 3 Enterprise. Uh, actually, we got a lot of uh, new, new stuff, point of interest, and the lower altitude of terrain follow and terrain following more mission and the customized aircraft heading and a gimbal page. Okay, let's start from the point of interest, which is the POI. The POI function allows the aircraft to circle around a specific point while keeping out the camera focused on the same spot. Uh, is it working? Okay. Um, and uh, to, uh, to start this POI function, uh, the steps are pretty simple. First of all, we just need to set a timed interval shot and then click on the uh, pin icon, point one, let's say, and uh, fly our drone away from point A for a little bit. And then we can click on the POI button to start the orbiting. Uh, well, when we control the sticking and start the orbiting. Uh, while we uh, while the orbiting, we can uh, press C1 to lock the speed, and we can do it in uh, in different vertical, uh, in different height, and different angle to capture more valuable data, uh, and to uh, process a better modeling with uh, Terra. Okay, uh, where this function can be used? Uh, car accident modeling and the telecom tower modeling. And I'm, I'm sure it's not the end of the apl applicable scenarios. And um, we are looking forward to get more uh, new feature or new product uh, feedback from our partners. Okay, let's move to next uh, new function. Uh, we got lower altitude of terrain follow. As we know, the aircraft can calculate this distance 
above the ground from the uh, visual system as an observation in real time, then automatically to adjust the fly altitude. And, in pre and previously, when we do the terrain follow job, the lowest altitude we can set is 80 meters. And now we got 30 meters as the lowest altitude, uh, which means with the Mavic 3 Enterprise, we can do more accurate mapping, mapping, mapping job. Okay, let's see what we can do with this function. Actually, it's not only uh, uh, useful for AEC. Uh, it's also very useful for mapping of uh, mining, uh, mining sites uh, where the terrain is constantly changing and uh, uh, maybe some place the DSM data is difficult to, uh, to use. Uh, this function should be very useful for this, uh, this uh, scenarios. And we're also looking forward to new feedback for that. Okay, next. Next, we have terrain following can be enabled in more missions. Uh, please uh, look at this, uh, this picture. Uh, like when we start to plan a mission, if we turn on the smart oblique, usually uh, previously we can't turn on at the same time the terrain follow. But now the smart oblique and the linear mission support, uh, support both the real time follow and the DSM follow and the oblique missions for DSM follow. Okay, the last new feature from my side is the custom aircraft heading and the gimbal pitch in mapping mission. As shown from the video, uh, like there is the bottom of, uh, of the custom camera angle. If we turn on this one and we can adjust the angle uh, of the aircraft heading and this function should be uh, should be very useful for solar PV inspection. Uh, actually, during the solar inspection, usually the flight path should be parallel with the panel rows, uh, and the, and our aircraft heading need to be per perpendicular to the flight path. Uh, and this function could, should uh, perfectly help to, to like reach the reach this, uh, scenarios. Uh, and I'm sure this will bring more value to our uh, energy industry customer. Okay, uh, from the last slide of my presentation, I would like to share with our partners about the uh, value chain. Uh, our end user use our drone to capture data and he gave the feedback to our partners and our partners collect all the feedback and uh, give valuable advice to DJI team. And DJI team are using this advice to provide a better product to the end user. Uh, that's very ideal, uh, healthy value chain. Uh, what I want to say is um, we are looking forward to get more valuable advice or feedback from our partners. And together we're gonna make the uh, together we're gonna make the product better, and we also gonna make this uh, market better. Okay, that's pretty much from DJI side. Thank you guys for attention and time. And next I will pass my screen to my friend Christophs. Christophs, are you ready for next presentation? Yep. Yeah, I sure okay. am. So uh, mm -hmm. give me the presenter rights and then I can uh, start sharing. Okay, just a minute. Okay, please. Yeah, just a second. Okay, uh, do you see the presentation? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Uh, so, okay, uh, let me then start off. Um, I know probably some of you um, have maybe used DGCS, uh, maybe not, uh, but in any case, I think it's worth to do a bit of an introduction. So who are we and what do we do? So our company is based in uh, the EU, in Latvia. Uh, we've been active since 2013 and have constantly been developing GCS ground station software uh, for flight planning and drone control. Uh, so if I had to uh, kind of put that in a single definition, I'd say that GCS is a uh, multi-platform professional drone flight planning software. Uh, so the key things about it would be that first it's desktop based and it installs locally on your computer. 
Uh, second is you can do turn following according to digital elevation models, according to uh, digital surface models, uh, as well as we also support a true terrain following with certain drones. Uh, it can also work fully offline. So this means that uh, maps and elevation of large areas you can catch for offline use and large areas can be even up to 100 square kilometers. Uh, we do support flight planning specifically for uh, LiDAR sensors, as well as doing flights for flight planning for photogrammetry, as well as corridor inspections. And of course, the main focus of today's webinar is our tools for planning um, vertical inspections. So we do support most uh, DJI drones, at least the ones who do support waypoint functions, as well as we do support other platforms as well. Uh, with UGCS, you can also uh, do custom map import, as well as, like I already mentioned before, you can do digital elevation model and the digital surface model import. Additionally, for instance, when planning larger corridors uh, or more complex missions, you can create your routes from KML or CSV files. So, then moving onwards, yeah, so about support the drones, just very quickly. So we support, support uh, most DJI enterprise drones. So the most popular one currently is the M300 platform. Uh, and then, of course, the M30 and M3E, which is the focus of today's webinar. And then we also support the older platforms. So, for instance, the M600, uh, Mavic 2 series, Phantom 4, and others which you see on the screen here. Um, as well as, like I mentioned before, we also support other uh, platforms. But most of our users are using DJI drones. Uh, so recently, uh, we also released a new version of UGCS, which has some quite interesting new features. The main one being the ability to connect UGCS directly from DJI Pilot 2. So there's no need to use any uh, third-party mobile app. You can use DJI's own DJI Pilot 2. Uh, this works for M300, M30, and uh, Mavic 3 Enterprise series. So M3E, M3 uh, Thermal, as well as the multispectral. So you can simply connect them directly from Pilot 2 to UGCS and then already start uh, your flight plan. Uh, we also added the ability to uh, control the initial speed when the drone is moving to the first waypoint, as well as we add the new localizations in the languages, uh, Japanese and Korean. Um, the current lineup of UGCS licenses is the following. So we have three different license types. We have uh, the most basic uh, pro license, which includes uh, most features for planning photogrammetry missions, as well as corridor inspections and the vertical missions go under the pro license as well. Then for the expert license, this is the one we recommend for most users because this also unlocks the ability to do flight planning for a LiDAR. And then as the uh, third kind of top of the line option here, we have GCS Enterprise, which is also actually basically designed for larger teams when you need to work with multiple drones, when the drones also sometimes can be in different locations and also Enterprise version does support video streaming. Uh, so then moving on to the topic of today's uh, conversation, uh, of course, Roger will tell in a lot more detail about this, but just maybe give you a bit of an introduction, kind of head start. So um, what are the main benefits of doing vertical object inspections in UGCS? So one of the main things is that it allows you to automate these manual operations. So we need to scan, for instance, buildings, dams, uh, or for, for instance, even, you know, uh, rock cliffs then uh, UGCS does help you to automate that and to launch drones on uh, automated missions uh, to also be able to gather better quality data by ensuring that the overlap between images will be uh, constant. It also does reduce uh, the risk when you need to acquire data from uh, such areas. So for vertical inspections also, it does make the flights safer. So the tools we would use here is firstly the vertical scan tool uh, for flight planning, of course. Then also you can import 3D objects as KMZ files in GCS, as well as you can import uh, digital surface models according to which you can also do the flight planning. Additionally, uh, we also support custom map overlays. So for instance, if the default uh, map, default base map layer is outdated, then you can import a more up-to-date map in UGCS to do the flight planning. Uh, and industries uh, for which this is useful uh, are actually quite a lot. These are just a few. So this can be used in the construction industry. Uh, this can be used for also real estate, uh, for instance, monitoring, planning, different uh, repair works. It can be used for geology, can be used for like what Roger also will mention about uh, modeling uh, the risk of rockfall in certain areas, as well as it can be used in the energy sector as well as utility sector. 
So the workflow overall will be the following. So first you would import the DSM or the uh, 3D object as a KMZ file, if you have uh, this data. Next, you would create a route using the vertical scan segment. And then in the route, you would set certain parameters such as what camera is used, what's the minimum and the maximum height of the survey, what is the distance, if you want certain overlap, to make sure that the camera attitude is set to zero degrees so that the camera is facing directly towards the building or a different angle if that's what you need. And then you of course also set the action which sets the camera to be triggered either by time or by distance. Uh, optionally also you can add waypoints before and or after the vertical scan segment to ensure that the drone can reach the first position safely. And then once you have all of the route planned, then you can already connect to GCS from DJ Pilot 2. You can open the route directly in DJ Pilot and launch the drone on uh, the automated route. Uh, now, I just want to quickly jump uh, into GCS and show you a, uh, a quick demo of it. So for that, I think I might need to switch off the uh, full screens here. So just bear with me here for a second while well, obviously, I'm sorry. Just a second. Yeah, there we go. So now you should be able to see GCS screen. I might still need to move it a bit higher here. So, okay, I hope that this should be fine. Um, I won't use too much time on this, but just really quickly, I want to show you how you would do the vertical inspection missions and how you would then upload them to the M3E drone. So for instance, here you can see we have a location where we have a cliff. And so now, so how do you, for instance, plan a vertical inspection mission uh, near it? So you can go here to where we have the vertical scan tool in UGCS. Then you can see I already have the route created for the uh, Mavic 3 Enterprise drone. Ne next, you choose what camera you want to use. In this case, I'll select the wide camera. And then also you see we have some other parameters here, such as we have the minimum height, maximum height, uh, what's the distance to the facade, or in this case, what's the distance to the cliff, as well as we have our overlap values and the pattern. So we can go ahead and, for instance, click here and place a few waypoints, which would make the drone already face the cliff. So you can add basically as many as you need. Uh, later on also, if necessary, you can adjust them a bit more. Uh, so now we can let the initial route be calculated so you can see this is how it looks like. And then, of course, here, if you need to, then you can raise up the maximum height. So, for instance, I think in this case, we can even go up to, for instance, 120 meters. We can make a few more adjustments when we need to. And also here, keep in mind that as the drone is uh, flying, as the drone will be flying this vertical inspection, you can see how it also does follow the terrain. So currently, we're using the default terrain, so the SRTM4 terrain elevation data but you can also import your own uh, when doing these types of flights. Uh, so here also you can see that you can set the camera attitude. So currently I have it set to zero degrees. So the camera will be facing exactly uh, towards the cliff here. And then I have the set camera by distance action, which uh, optionally you can also replace by set camera by time, which in my experience for virtual inspections does work a bit better. We can also open up the elevation uh, profile. So here you can see how the flight uh, looks like. You can see the altitude at each point. You can see the overall altitude here, as well as uh, the estimated flight duration. Um, and then, so once you have this flight plan, so how do you upload this flight to the M3E drone? So process will be the following. So here you click on add. Uh, you need to, of course, firstly make sure that the remote controller of your M3E and the laptop is on the same network. Then you click here on connect DJ Pilot 2. You will see the IP address, the local network address of the computer. So you simply take this uh, URL, you input it in the uh, cloud connection uh, tab on DJ Pilot 2, and then already uh, it will connect to GCS automatically, and you'll be able to see all of your routes planned in DJ Pilot 2 all the routes planned from UGCS, you'll see them in pilot two, I'll be able to open them up and upload them to the drone. So as far as the software demo, uh, that's it. I'll just quickly jump back to the presentation. I have a few, a few more slides remaining that I would uh, like to show you. And then already we can move uh, on to the next part of the webinar. So yeah, now you should again see the, uh, see the presentation. So, um, 
Also, uh, what would be the next step? So let's say you have the M3E drone and you would like to test this out. Uh, so we uh, are offering specifically for M3E users the ability to try uh, GCS uh, for free for one month. Uh, we have uh, on our normal site, we have a 14 day trial, but so here you are able to use it up to one month to make sure that it's right for you and that uh, you can use it. So you can visit the site gcs.com slash m3e, or you can simply scan the QR code that's here on the screen. Uh, you also later on see it in the uh, recording of the, of the webinar that will be sent to you. So no worries if you maybe can't open it right now. You can then fill out the form in the site using the code uh, webinar m3e. And so by inputting this code, you will then receive GCS a free one month trial. After that, you can head on over to our site, download GCS, and then you can already proceed to planning your flights. So that's uh, how the page looks like. So if you scan this QR code, you'll get to this page. So you can simply fill out the form. So email uh, your name, industry, and then the webinar M3E code, which you can see also here on the screen. And then simply click on get trial and you'll get trial code as well as instructions on how to install GCS. Uh, so here also we have a short uh, GIF. I'm not sure if it will be shown uh, ideally here through the webinar, but yes, yeah, so essentially, like I mentioned, you would click on GCS uh, to be able to see the IP address, and then you go into DJ file two, uh, input the address under cloud platform. So you copy the URL or not copy, I'm sorry, you input it there, click on connect. Then once you're connected to GCS, you go to roots, then the cloud tab, and you're able to see all of them. And then in fact, what you can do is you can catch all of the routes basically to local storage. And then from there, uh, when you are in the field, even without the connection to GCS, you can already from there take all the routes, uh, run them. And if you also need to make some changes to them, such as, for instance, changing where the first waypoint will be, you can also do that. Uh, and then another thing is that so when you give this a try, if you, if you feel that this works for you and that you want to continue using GCS, you can use actually the same code uh, at checkout on shopgcs.com to get 10% off any GCS perpetual license. So that's the offer we have for uh, DJI M3E users and it's valid currently until uh, May 30th. So until the end of May, if you grab the trial today, you know, you have this one month tested out and then you have a month also to decide if you want to go ahead and uh, kind of continue using GCS. Uh, and yeah, so uh, thank you, everybody. That's it for my part. So now I believe I can pass the torch, the torch on to. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the wonderful sharing yeah. and also to the, also the gift to us. Thank you. And I believe most of our, of our partners now have the knowledge of the UGCS value. Okay, then we will turn the screen for today's main character, Roger, to tell us how to do vertical surveying with the Mavic 3 Enterprise and UGCS. Roger, I will meet you presenter. Hi, can you hear me well and see my screen? Yeah. Hey, yep. Hey, everybody, uh, hello. I'm going to talk about uh, the use of Mavic 3 Enterprise and UGCS for vertical surveying and this kind of vertical scenarios like a dam or like a natural rock cliff. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about the main objectives and the products that we can get using these techniques and this software. And also I will show you uh, two case studies in this uh, cliff in Menorca Island and the Castrovido Dam in Spain, okay? Uh, so I wish you get a good breakfast because uh, first of all, I want to spend a few minutes in showing you uh how we can manage all this data that we can get with drones okay well uh first of all who i am i am roger ruiz carulla i am geological engineer specialized in geotechnics uh, i developed my phd uh, studying fragmentation in rock falls developing a fractal fragmentation model for rock falls and using and developing methodologies to use uh, on monetary vehicles for uh, civil engineering and geological engineering so nowadays I am researcher and associate or part-time professor in the Civil Engineering School of Barcelona in the Technical University of, of Catalonia. Uh, and I am soon co-founder of Sir John Consultants Engineering, uh, where we, well, more or less we, we deal with natural hazards and global change challenges, doing studies of flooding simulations and dam failure simulations, 
doing geotechnics studies in the world of landslides, rockfalls, and quantitative risk assessment. And also, for sure, we use drones to do photogrammetry and get our own topographies or topotos, 3D models, and use it for change detection, control volume, for example, a lot of queries to detect the stockpile or excavations, in civil engineering monitoring worlds as build products. And also, we do consulting and formation to other companies in order to integrate the drones and the photogrammetry or LiDAR techniques in its uh, own flown chart. Well, this is more or less who I am and what I'm doing. Uh, and today we're going to talk about uh, why we fly with drones to acquire field data. Well, the, the answer is easy for the products that we get, for, for sure, the videos and the pictures. Uh, I'm sure that uh, all of you know about the uh, 3D point clouds and 3D text rays in mesh from photogrammetry and some sub products like the digital elevation model and the orthophotos that we can get from different orientations, as we will see now. But, well, for sure, comparing with classical works, uh, using drones to acquire field data is much more efficient. It's much more secure for the people that go to the field to take data in queries, in uh, critical geological risk areas, or in uh, civil works, and increase the data quantity and quality. So now I'm going to spend a few minutes in show you the quantity and the quality of the data that we can get using drones uh, in these combined scenarios with more or less flat or steeper or vertical places. Well, for sure, all of you uh, can see this is a picture of a drone. We can see here a fresh crack. We can use it to inspection in this area. We can zoom it. We can see that the crack is freshly opened. Uh, we can see the grass inside, some stones. One of the mm, beautiful possibilities of the drone is to move it from another point of view, now from, from the top. We can see again this, this crack, we can zoom it, we can see the open of this crack with the grass inside. And this qualitatively is very good information. But as engineers, we need to quantify, we need to measure centimeters, we need to measure displacements or deformations or quantify deep, deep direction, volumes, uh, stresses, forces that we need to calculate. Okay? So how to do that? I'm going to show you a case. This is Castel de Mur. Let me try to share with you a video with this tool. If it not works very well, I will try later directly sharing with my um, my my computer. You should see a video. Uh, Roger, we don't hear you. Uh, you might need to unmute yourself. Sorry, can you hear me now? There's some audio problem. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah when, when I share the video, the, the voice goes to the video. Yeah? Uh, well, this is Castel de Mur failure. This is a failure uh, of 18,000 cubic meters occurred in 2018 in the Catalan Pyrenees. And we go there to assess and help the rescue teams to ensure that the area was uh, safe enough for the, their works. Uh, and this is the, the, the uh, real video, the original video. Uh, and this is the 3D model, the 3D texturized maze that we get. This is a composed scenario where we have to take pictures in a zenithal point of view, but we also need to take frontal and oblique pictures from the uh, vertical cliff because only using zenithal pictures, we are not able to see how the scar area, this vertical surface is, okay? I will... Uh, change to my screen again. Uh, okay, maybe you have to increase again, uh, full screen, your presentation. Yes. Well, you are seeing my, my presentation again. Uh, no, why not? Uh, I think we're seeing it. Yes, okay, yes now. Okay, so you know that the main product that we get from a uh, photogrammetric processing is the 3D point cloud. This is the original data. Uh, and this is, for example, the point cloud uh, of 7 million points in Castile de Mur that we get. And what also appears the step that we have to do in the office is to classify this point cloud between the points that are uh, representing ground terrain, in this case, colored by brown color, vegetation in green color to be filtered to get beautiful digital surface models. We can, for example, classify as blocks or, or uh, boulders in the deposit. And um, focusing on the scar, this is the vertical part that we take pictures frontally. 
uh, we can separately between the overhang point, so it's like a cave, it's points inside the terrain. These points will be never well reproduced using Giso curves or digital surface model, and we have to work it in a 3D model. And the blue points that are corresponding to the rock face above this, this overhang. Okay. So, well, this is what we can do in the in the office. And from this very well classified point cloud, we can get a lot of information, as, as I will show you now, uh, talking about the quantity and the quality of the data when we fly with a drone uh, on the field to create data. But let's see what, what we can do on field. On field, we can go there, we can fly the drone, and with 10, 15 minutes of flight and 10, 15 minutes of processing, we can get uh, on the field an auto photo to assess the emergency uh, risk and rescue teams. Well, uh, do you know the difference between working with a 25 centimeters picture? In Catalonia, we have on a yearly uh, ortho photo covering the whole uh, state of 35 centimeters pixel. And this is a one centimeter pixel ortho photo that we get with our drone flight with the periodicity that we want, not just after an event, for example, like in this case. Uh, for sure, uh, you, you, you can notice here the difference between working with 25 or five centimeters pixel of one centimeter picture in, in, uh, in order to cartography, identify different kind of elements. Yeah? So the auto photo is like the more genuine uh, product that we get with drones and are very useful in order to cartogra uh, cartography some elements like uh, draw the scar, draw the previous uh, cliff line, uh, draw the, the, the road. And uh, also another typical product is the digital elevation model, uh, or digital surface model. In this case, we get a seven centimeters pixel and we filter the points classified as vegetation and the overhangs point that cannot be well represented in a digital surface model. And we use it also to create the easy curves and get the topography of the area. Yeah. So <clears throat> combining also the orthophotos and the digital surface model or only with the orthophotos with image analysis, we can do uh, another um, work. This is count objects or quantify areas and volume of objects. This is a beautiful case because it's a lot, it's, uh, um, very regular. It's not counting cars or windows. Each block have different heights and dimensions. And this is an example of how we can use the orthophotos and the image uh, analysis to quantify and count objects. But, well, another product that is very interesting is the 3D texture acid mesh. This is a mm, lower geometry quality data, but higher visually quality data in terms of the, the pictures from the drone are inserted or uh, integrated in the in the rendering of this texture. So we can use it, for example, for do pre-post failure analysis. And we can try to get, for example, in the upper part, you can see a picture, a real picture from some boy from this area before the failure. And then uh, we use the 3D texture acid mesh to try to put the camera in the same position and try to do a pre-post uh, image comparison. Here we can see the failure, and in, in the previous pre-failure picture, we can see a little charge here that was completely destroyed in the wrong mass failure. Yeah. So in order to uh, compare uh, and change the texture and, and see what happened in time, uh, we can do, for example, DOD, dem demo of difference, comparing two digital elevation models in Z direction, like you can see in the left side. Uh, or we can use it in a 3D models like cloud to mesh or cloud to cloud, or if you use cloud compared with M3C2 uh, algorithms that uh, are essentially 3D point clouds comparison in order to calculate uh, the changes in time. We use it a lot in queries to calculate excavation, stockpiles, and civil engineering uh, works to evaluate the evolution of the civil works. Yeah? If we focus on the SCAR, we can uh, get a um, more detailed uh, 3D model of the SCAR and we can try to reconstruct the volume detached using previous uh, LiDAR data that we get from the administration, okay? This is all uh, 3D, but we can do something interesting. Today we are talking about vertical surveying. This is a vertical area, this is the SCAR, and this is an frontal auto photo of the SCAR. So taking pictures correctly and getting this 3D model that we have to ensure that we have well uh, the, the pictures from the sky, we can get this kind of frontal order photos. This is very useful in order to cartography something 
and also for do uh, image analysis. In this case, we train a model to identify which are the pre-existing joints. There are the more bony parts of the scar uh, where the oxidation due to the flow water, because the, the cracks were already open before the pillar, oxidate these areas and do it uh, brown, brown. And uh, to define these uh, rock bridges, this is a rock that has to be break in order to allow the failure. So we are interested in this in this crack because it's the crack that it's fulfilled by water, generating water pressures and produce the, the failure. Yeah? Yeah. But it's just an example of orthophotos, yeah? uh, frontal orthophotos and how we can use it with uh, image analysis. And if we use the 3D point cloud, not on a frontal orthophoto, the 3D point cloud of this scar, we can use it uh, also to study uh, the joint set and we can manually uh, modeling um, this outcrop, this stratification, these folds, these joints, and we can more or less semi-automatically define the deep direction in deep and adjust planes using uh, different kind of algorithms like Q facets in Cloud Compare in order to define the different kind of joint sets, the folds, and the, the interpretation of the flare mechanics. Okay, this is a quite good uh, application of drones in vertical areas or critical areas. For example, we do it a lot uh, working in queries in a very vertical places. This is a uh, 80 meters height uh, query uh, where we fly the drone and we can get a nice 3D point cloud calculating the normal vector. We can plot it by deep direction and we can use this information to avoid be there uh, because this is a very dangerous area with a lot of rock holes every day. So we can use that to adjust more or less automatically planes at this point cloud. And we can use our geological and human criteria to define which are corresponding to real joint or geological planes. And then we can do this um, an statistic analysis in order to get the mean model planes of each joint family. This is, um, this is very nice because we increase a lot the security of the people that work there, the geologists that work there, working with compass tools in order to measure deep, deep direction, the orientations, or doing uh, different kind of inspections. So we can fly the drone, uh, taking frontal, oblique, and zenithal picture. We get this 3D point cloud, and we can, for example, in this case, in this case, a study with more than 5,000 measurements of, of planes, and this also have a very relevant. Um, point in a statistic, from a statistical point of view yeah? and from the security point of view. Yeah? So finally, getting again, uh, com coming back to the first picture that I say, okay, this is qualitatively. So if we work this uh, crack in a 3D model, we can use it to define the crack using the 3D text tracing mesh, or we can adjust the trace using the 3D point cloud or the planar plane in order to define potential unstable volumes or use it for uh, stability analysis. Okay, I'm going to show this video from my laptop. I know that it, I, from my computer, I know that it will be a little bit lagged, but um, this is not in the in the webinar platform. Okay, but don't worry about the lagging. I'm, I'm just want to show you how we can um, show to the decision makers the results of a flight drone. I I, I when the uh, this place I fly 20 minutes taking zenithal pictures and frontal pictures and then we spend weeks or months analyzing the 3D point cloud, the joint families, identifying the failure mechanisms and then uh, the, in defining the unstable or potential stable volumes and then we can carry out stability analysis and finally we can colorize it with this semaphoric representation with green, don't worry with this rock mass uh, orange, okay, we have to monitor, or red, we have to uh, clean up this rock mass, or we have to fix it with balls or mesh or uh, another mitigation measures. So this is the, the way how the decision makers want to see the information. They don't want to read my 200 report of geotechnics and rock mechanics characterization. They just want to see this video and speak a little bit on how much money they have to spend in which point to in situ plates, yeah. Okay, so when when we already uh, have well defined this potential unstable volumes, uh, I just want to show this because it's the the product of my PhD. I'm very proud of it. 
This is the rock pole, it is a 3D simulation rock pole with our rock GIS software that is the, the only software in the world that uh, reproduces correctly the fragmentation of blocks during the propagation of the rock pole. So when the block falls down, we can be able to reproduce the breakage of the rock and this kind of multi-trajectories that impacts against the infrastructures, the, the, the roads or the people inside the vehicles. Yeah. But this is more or less the, 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 the work that we do. This is another case. This is a failure in Montseigne Massif due to a heavy, extremely rainfalls. Uh, we can go there, we can um, do an inspection from a safe point. I will pass a little bit. We can see all this part. This is also an overhang. This part of the road is like flying. We cannot see it if we are not under the, the road base. And we can do that from a safe point of view. You will see me here, okay, in a safe place. Yes. And then we can get um, points of view that we never get it from another way uh, that is without using drones. Okay. And again, uh, what we need as engineers, we need to quantify. We are not, we cannot working only with beautiful images. We need to quantify data. So this is an example of this is the 3D model that we get. And then we do the comparison against the previous topography of this road. So we can get easily a different map and an estimation of the volume that fails here. In this case, it's uh, 680 cubic meters. So we can go to speak with the mayor or the road manager to see, okay, here you have a 680 cubic meters uh, hole, how we how have to repair. Okay. So <clears throat> more or less, uh, this is like a beginning of my presentation, talking about how we can fly 15 or 20 minutes in a place, taking pictures in a zenithal point of view, frontal and oblique point of view. We can get a visible 3D point cloud. The typical products like the orthophoto in zenithal are also from frontal orthophotos, or the classified point clouds, the digital elevation models, difference maps in 2.5D or 3D, counting objects for sure, getting different profiles and use it also for 3D joint pattern characterizations and 3D image volume reconstructions. Um, if you want more in, uh, information, I present this in the International Symposium of Landslides, and I think that it's in, in YouTube. Uh, I just have three videos in YouTube that you can check. This is the only one in, in English. It's just five minutes telling us this, this example, okay? So what we need to get good field data? Uh, we, we need uh, a well-programmed flight plan, with the uh, crystals show us uh, the UGCS how it works and I will tell you a little bit and we need to choose the correct drone we have a lot of drones in the market now and I will talk about the Mavic 3 Enterprise um, today so talking about drones uh, I'm flying drones from the last 10 years like says crystals everything changed a lot this last decade um, we start uh, building our own drones uh, but then we start using DJ Inspire 1 to pro uh, the one pro the dji inspired to the spreading wind 900 we also use uh, mavic 2 pro more portable drones the phantom pro rtk with rtk system that it's very useful we'll talk about this and the mavic air 2s with ppk model installed by topo drone company but nowadays uh, i'm just using the mavic 3 enterprise with the rtk model okay uh, why is because with, with inspire 2 i have a good sensor a sensor for thirst it's a big sensor uh, very good for photogrammetry, but it's a rolling shutter camera, okay, and the time flight is not too big. Then with Mavic 2 Pro, I increase the, the, the time, but the sensor is it, it, uh, smaller, and with Mavic Air 2S or the Phantom 4 RTK, I have this kind of PPK or RTK positioning, um, and then I don't have to, to put too much ground control points in, in terrain. And now with Mavic 3 Enterprise, with RTK model, uh, I can fly 40 minutes or 30 minutes in the worst case with a sensor for things like in the Inspire 2 with a mechanical shooter. So it's better to do photogrammetry uh, at high speeds. This drone flies at uh, 15 meters per second 
and also it have a second camera with a lot of zoom as we will see now to do inspections so well it's a quite nice drone i have it here uh, if you have questions uh, maybe we can talk about it uh, later uh, it works very well it's small it's easy to to go away with that with it uh, with 12 meters per second wind resistance and this kind of 360 um, 360 degrees anti-collision system and well it's lightweight and compact easy to carry around centimeter level position with rtk so we can get a centimeter precision with our ground control points uh, this has this this new um capabilities of real-time terrain following and smart oblique features the dual cameras that are built and it's a we can program the flights with UGCS for vertical cliffs, curves, and bands. Okay. Well, let's see. This is an example of the zoom. I know that it's a lag video because I'm reproducing from my computer, but uh, I'm sure that you know that the videos from these drones are very fluid. But just to check the zoom capabilities of this drone, it's amazing. I'm more than 300 meters from this tower, and I can see, and I can read the letters of CMAC. Yes, let's see the zoom out. Okay, it's the, the first time that you play with this zoom. It's uh, quite impressive how much zoom you can you can do. This is Montserrat, beautiful mountain in in Catalonia that we that we love. This is another example of inspectioning uh query installations okay this is quite good because you don't have to be very close to the operations to the machinery to the hangers to the you know you can be far away for the owner this is like more secure and from a single point you can check a lot of different locations in the same place and it's mm, very very useful this this uh, mixed camera Okay, you can see here the, the rolling and and the client tell me, Roger, please go to the left, go to the left, Roger, okay, zoom in, zoom out. And the client also like this kind of uh, games, you know, to see here and there. Well, this is the, the last Zoom video that I want to show you. This is the uh, first days that I used, I, I bought this drone in October. And the first times that I went to the field, I tried to see, I, I can be able to read the letters in the other side uh, of the road. And, and yes, I, I can I can read this card. It's, it's, it's quite amazing, the, the zoom capability. You can see here how far it's more than 100 meters. Okay. Well, so this is my favorite inspection equipment, the Mavic 2 Enterprise with the RTK model and 10 batteries. I can wear seven batteries in, with me and three plus uh, and i also use the dji rising creation goggles connected with an hdmi cable uh, and i also use an asus zen screen this is a two table screen with five uh, inches uh, 15 inches uh, two table in order to see better what i'm doing and to show to the client uh, the images in real time so many times i am piloting uh, with this little the screen and and the clients are using the goggles and the and the monitor Okay, and for photogrammetric, uh, I'm using the same equipment by with a laptop in order to generate 3D models and auto photos on the field and, and check that everything is good. Okay, so this is the, the drone that we are using that we are talking about today, the Mavic 3 Enterprise RTK. And this is one of the first pictures that I get it that I, I it was a, a nice drone. So then what do we need? We need a flight plan. We need a programmed flight plan. <clears throat> And this is why we can use the DJI Pilot 2 uh, app. Uh, it's uh, very easy to, to use. But for more complex uh, situations like vertical ones, we need uh, another tool like UGCS. Okay? Uh, when we program a flight plan, we need to know the ground sampling distance. In this case, uh, the Mavic 3 Enterprise have 0.8 centimeters pixel at 30 meters and 3.2 centimeters pixel at 120 meters. I'm used to fly between 70 and 80 meters with a centimeter pixel around two centimeters okay this is a flight plan more or less flat more or less easy uh this is the one that we need the terrain follow okay where the drone adapts the height uh, to the terrain topography 
and then is a more complex uh, system with a tearing flow with double grid. The double grid was useful when using rolling shutter uh, cameras with mechanical uh, shutter are not uh, necessary, <clears throat> but we still need to take images from these vertical areas and not from this genital point of view. So we need to <clears throat> include obliques or front pictures from this really vertical uh, talus slopes, cliffs, dams, buildings, or what else that we want to study or analyze. Okay. So <clears throat> to do that, we can program this kind of light plans where we are scanning the cliff <clears throat> or the building uh, in a frontal mode. Um, Christophe show you now an EGCS uh, flight plan going up and down, up and down, up and down. I prefer to use the same height elevation movement, okay, and increase in order to be more efficient with the battery, okay, because for the drone is uh, um, go up and down, go up and down, you are spending a lot of battery. So if you can maintain the height altitude, then you can do it with UGCS. Yeah, I will use it. I will show you how I use it. Yes, same yeah, if, if I can add a bit to that, Roger. So yeah, you're, you're absolutely right there. Uh, in the example, I did show the vertical pattern, uh, but yeah, so typically also when we need to scan, you know, something that's uh, longer than it is tall, then it is more efficient to use the horizontal pattern, like you mentioned. But when, for example, we need to inspect, let's say, some tall a building that's not super long, then the vertical pattern does make more sense. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm fully there with you. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for a very vertical uh, building, it will be it will be greater. So, but this is, this is the point. The, the point is in which direction the camera is moving on. So, for example, in a genital point of view, in these uh, green lines, okay, when you are moving the drone in the forward direction, the overlap of the pictures will be across the shortest part of the sensor, okay? We have a sensor that is not a square, it's a rectangular shaped sensor, and Picture by picture, the overlap will be across or along the shortest part of the sensor, okay? And when we uh, turn on, we, we have to consider it. But when we're working in frontal and oblique pictures, if you are doing in buildings in this vertical going up and down, you will be also taking the overlap with the shortest part of the sensor. If you are moving laterally, you will take the pictures uh, overlapping along the longest part of the sensor, okay? Don't worry about this because today UGC has calculated for you, but the days before, the years before, we have to do an Excel file to calculate how the sensor dimensions affect the velocity and the time that we have to take the pictures to guarantee the correct overlap of the of the pictures, okay? So that's the point. Imagine that I, we need to find, uh, to, to fix a flight plan in an area like this one. Uh, we need a previous topography like a digital surface model, we need to define the goals, the ground sample distance, and in this case, for example, we are interested in this road, the tunnels, the protection tunnels, and these mm, red points that will be the potential rock wall sources. Okay, so for the flight plan, we will need to define the takeoff point, we will need to define the tracks that we will do, the heights, the velocity in pictures, the distance between the drone and the terrain to define the ground sample distance, the number of flights, because we need to know how many batteries we need to cover all the area. And the number of the total number of pictures that we will get to to have enough memory in the SD card. So this is the idea. This is a the 3D model of the area that we are interested in, colored by slope. So the red parts are very vertical, completely vertical uh, surfaces. Uh, this is a 400 meters height difference and 700 meters width of cliff. Uh, and what we do before use UGCS is do this kind of scam saying, okay, I will do a flight covering this area, another track with this one, this one, passing, 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 and I will do eight tracks with a frontal view at different heights to cover the whole cliff. And then I will do also two tracks with the needle point of view to get like a more structured data because the photogrammetric processing uh, software works very well with completely zenithal pictures. So it increased the, the quality of the total quality of the, of the model. Uh, but today we have beautiful tools like the UGCS that may help us to do it is at very, very easy. Uh, Christoph, I don't know if I'm doing well, but I suppose that yes, I define the, the takeoff point and then I define a line as a scan line. And this is the, the fixed way and then move the next one changing. If this is a second scan line moving again, moving again, moving again. And then I can adapt very well the, the movement of the, of the drone inside the, this cliff. 
Do you, do you think that it's correct, Christoph? This kind of <laughs> flight plan? Yeah, to, to me, it's looking good. Um, we actually also have been thinking maybe of adding even you know, some ability to set a certain angle to the vertical yeah. inspection. So uh, let, let's see. But yeah, o overall, this does look uh, really good. Yeah, yeah. So, well, we know which tools we have to do well program flight plan. And we know, for example, my two enterprises are good just to, to do this one. So, uh i i already explained you what are the main objectives and the ideas of these products and i want to show you now uh two uh, cases menorca cliff and castro Vido dam this is a cast uh, well first of all uh, why is necessary to do vertical data acquisition i think that all of us understand now that in completely vertical scenarios with no accessibility we need to use this kind of, of tools okay and maybe three enterprise help us uh, for the it's 40 minutes or 30 minutes in the worst case with a lot of windy day and uh, the camera it's quite good for inspection the post processing with rtk for accurate representation of the products like 3d fine cloud digital surface models and autophoto with rtk it or ppk it's very useful because in these places commonly it's difficult to put ground control points okay or we cannot put directly ground control points in many places and for me the best point is about the security because the large flight time when you fly with 30 minutes you can be focused on the job because flying with drones if you have experience flying with drones you always have to be attending to the wind to the battery time where is the drone where i have to go uh where i have time to come back with security and when you have 30 minutes flight time per battery you completely uh focused on the job okay as well as the object detection system and the wind resistance and all of these but the time per battery of this drone is a quite good point okay so let's see the menorca clear uh i'm i'm going to show you a video well i know it's a lag video don't worry uh is to take the ideas of this scenario this is in Menorca Island, in Baleares Island, in front of Catalonia, in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, and this is a pub, a discotheque, a musician bar, inside a cave, in a limestone cliff, in a very beautiful and magic place, at the night, with lights and the sea. It's a, it's a quite beautiful uh, place. But at the same time, it's a hard, dangerous, rockfall area and they have to ensure that their clients are safe in these terraces and also inside the caves this is a, a very very beautiful place uh, to work to enjoy uh, and we cannot put ground control points here and we have problems with wind speed here and we have to uh, do inspections and decide which kind of mitigation measures we do year by year so we fly this area every year okay uh with this kind of multi-copter drones you know that you don't need too much space uh to to take off and land okay this is from the place you can see this these balls here you will see now okay you can see these metallic anchors okay that this is the kind of measures that we we have to to check okay so real-time inspections it means that I am flying the drone with two more uh, engineers looking uh, at the side and looking, moving the drone. And now with the zoom, we can go to see the anchors, to see how the, the corrosion is, because the salt of the sea have a, a high powerful corrosion power uh, for the metals. And, and, and we have to check uh, the anchors heads, okay? and the the inspection camera with the zoom are, are quite quite good okay now we can move down we can check for example this rock here that have also an anchor okay uh, there is a, a lag i'm checking the presentation with a laptop connected to this webinar there is a lag and i'm moving uh, slower okay we can move to one side to the other side to see the cracks for example, here in the right side, you can see this more brown area where a blocks falls down recently. Here, okay. So we can put in a more lateral point of view and get zoom into the crack. 
to see how much is uh, the aperture of the crack. We have too much zoom, okay? In this case, we have uh, many cases we, we don't need too, too, too much zoom. Here, eh? in, in dams, for example, it's very useful. Yeah? But we, we have a lot of, we can go down to the sea and we continue the inspection going up. In this case, uh, Chris Tabs, in this manual piloted uh, inspections, we are going vertically uh, because the client wants to check every line in vertical areas that we uh, work at, with these ideas. No? For example, this is the fixing of these terrace, and we want to check the upper part. And the, the vertical direction is the ones that it's better in order to see, okay, which kind of blocks can be fall down over this area. Okay. And this is the, the pictures that we can we can get. And we are taking videos and pictures every three seconds, for example, because then in the office we can uh, see again and zoom it and see something, um, cracks or uh, anything that we can lost during the time, uh, real time inspections. Okay. And then we execute a program at flight. How we do the program at flight with UGCS, we introduce the digital surface model and we do this kind of lifeline. In this case, it's five tracks. At different heights, you can see that we start to take off from the middle part of the cliff and the drone goes down at 10 meters height and then at 20, 30, 40 something, 50 something, okay? So the idea is with seven minutes plus three minutes, uh, we get five tracks in a frontal point of view, then a zenithal track, uh, and then finally a frontal manual piloted uh, track taking the, the wall clip to get a more uh, consistent uh, 3D photogrammetric model. Okay, so we get 180 pictures with a from a 20 meters distance, and we get a ground sampling distance of a half centimeter per pixel. Yeah, with a 12 million point cloud, an orthophoto of a uh, half centimeter. So this is the product. This is a 3D texture acid mesh. This is from the zenithal point of view, and I put it to see, hey, we cannot fly in a zenithal point of view. We need to fly in frontal and oblique pictures because we cannot see this in classic genital orthophoto topography. We need to work in a 3D uh, environment, in a 3D scenario, okay? So this is the 3D texturizing mesh. This is the 3D point cloud, main products that we get. Uh, as you know, I work a lot with 3D point clouds, uh, clarified by orientation, the direction to characterize the, the refractors. And this is the frontal orthophoto. This is a quite good product because uh, we can uh, use it in uh, GIS, in uh, Geographic Information System, in order to create our own database. We have a kind of database that I cannot show you, too, but we have all the balls, uh, what is the state at which year we installed, all the meshes, uh, also the different kind of supplies. And this is like our map, base map for the cartography on the database of the client, okay? And also, we can compare year by year this uh, frontal orthophoto, okay? So this is a, a beautiful database to manage the rockfall risk, the mitigation measures, and all the installations that are in this, in this cliff and in this area. So we can compare year by year the frontal orthophoto as well as the 3D point clouds, and we can detect automatically uh, rockfalls. And we can also visualize very well using the comparison of the texturized 3D mesh. Yeah. So these data are very useful for inspection, monitoring and change detection, inventory, all the mitigation measures, the bolt, mesh, shot grade, for rock joint pattern characterization, for potential stable volumes identification, to do rockfall simulations, and finally, for rockfall quantitative risk assessment. So this is the base of the data that we use, okay? And then very fast, because it's more similar, this is Castro Vido Dam. This is another case uh, with vertical area. Even we can see a video to see the place. Well, this is a um, recent dam in Spain between Soria and Burgos in Castro Vido. Uh, it was never fulfilled. Uh, and we are working here for rock mechanics uh, issues. And we also uh, use the, the drone for inspectioning the, the, the dam, okay? This is just a beautiful video to see how, how the dam is it, okay? There is a flat wall in the, in the upstream side, and this is a concrete gravity dam, okay? 
Well, what's the idea? The idea is we need a preparation, the, the preparation of a security study in a program pipeline. We need to do inspections in real time, and we can do inspections then with the, the same pictures and video or digital elevation model, 3D point cloud and other photos. Yeah, this is the real time inspections. Um, here, the, the zoom is perfect to work, okay? Uh, because in dams, the wind is uh, it, uh, a huge danger uh, because there, there are vortex of wind in, in the dams when you are very close to the dam. So be able to, to be at 60 meters or 80 meters of the dam and zoom it to check the the all the elements are are quite uh, quite good yes you can see here the bars uh door it's, it's uh, impressive how the the zoom can help us okay i am looking to the laptop to see how you are seeing this video okay you can see here the zoom how we can for sure uh, see this this branch during the zoom you can see how at the beginning gives a digital zoom of the white camera and how at certain point it changed to the second camera uh, with a with a focal length uh, modified and this is another video of inspectioning in this case we are going to see these doors okay we can do zoom to see the beams the support beams okay here you will see the change of the camera this is digital camera of the white camera and now it changed to the second camera and the resolution it's it's quite impressive as the sensor it's it's it is smaller than the four thirds the the result the, the the zoom the optical zoom it's, it's quite quite good and the resolution it's very very nice okay and then we can go up and move move along and also it can um see a little bit to the up to that part and it's also interesting i will see you a, a bridge case so in order to see the the bottom part of structures okay so it's uh, quite good for for inspections okay so this is the real time inspections this is the the print screens of, of the, the video, captions from the video, and then the programmed flight. Look at this again, Christoph. Hey, it's a flight that I'm moving with different track scan lines, okay, adapting to this the base of the dam that will increase uh, along the valley. Okay, and this is for the downstream, and also I have another one from the upstream. Okay, so this is two different flight plans from the downstream part and for the upstream part. Okay, so then. Uh, I exported to DJI Pilot, and this is how I, I see it in DJI Pilot. Christoph today uh, explained about the new uh, methodology to connect to the GCCS directly. This is how I see the downstream and the upstream uh, flight plans in the DJI Pilot application. Okay, and this is the pictures that we get. You can see here the pictures. The pictures itself are very useful because we can compare picture by picture, uh, year by year, and we can zoom it in the pictures and are very, very beautiful uh, pictures, okay? And many people call me about these uh, black corners. This is an spherical focal length. It's normal. Maybe if you work before with Phantom for RTK or something like this, uh, you you will know about this and the, the the pictures that the drone takes are quite 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 good okay so this is the 3d point cloud that, that we get this is the pictures and we spend six minutes in downstream seven minutes in in the upstream so we use six tracks five tracks and another zenithal track uh, with 215 um, pictures at a distance more or less of 30 meters getting a ground sampling distance of 0.8 centimeters pixels uh, per pixel, and we're obtaining a point cloud of 41 million points and orthophotos of 0.8 centimeter pixels. Okay, so this is the product that we get the Zenital Orthophoto, the digital elevation model, and also two uh, frontal orthophotos from upstream and downstream, and for sure the 3D point cloud. Okay, let's see it a little bit. This is the orthophoto. 
This is the digital surface model without the vegetation already filtered. This is the, uh, for me, one of the best products, the frontal orthophotos that we can compare year by year if there are new cracks or damages or any sign uh, of uh, any phenomenon that we want to control. Okay, this is the 3D point cloud from the upstream point of view. And this is the point cloud from the downstream point of view. It's the same uh, model, eh? it's the same 3D point cloud. And this is another case uh, where we are working with these spillways. This is another dam in Arenos. Um, and we are working in these spillways and, and the 3D point cloud are very useful because they are uh, complex geometries and we have to do an excavation here. So we also fly and we control uh, the civil engineering works based on these three point clouds that we can check all the, the changes in, in time. So the products are, are these ones, are the ones that we use for doing inspections, monitoring and change detection, inventory all the elements and identify cracks. And if you bring me two minutes, I will show you also the bridge inspection, okay? It's the same as in a dam, okay? We can get this lateral, one well, zenithal pictures, lateral pictures, but we can also take pictures from the bottom. Okay, and um, it's quite good. The, the 3D point cloud is a completely point cloud of the bridge where we can uh, go inside the, the bridge from very difficult um, accessibility points of view. Okay, and we can uh, see the, the beams very well. We can be like inside the bridge. Okay, we can um, here measure uh, deformations against regular surfaces. We can for sure take a section part in 3D or typical uh, planner 3D section. This is a section of the point cloud, okay? And we can measure in this point cloud distances. We can do deformation analysis against primary um, primitive surfaces. Uh, and for sure, like, we can get uh, orthophoto from the bottom. In this case, at three millimeters pixel, okay? This is a quite good product. So in this bridge inspection, we get the typical genital orthophoto where we cannot see anything, but we can also get the uh, bottom orthophoto where, yes, we can see if there is crack or apertures between beams and, and shot grid pieces. We can get the 2D also orthophoto, lateral, lateral orthophoto, and the, the 3D point cloud to get profiles or deformations analysis. Yeah? So more or less, I already explained all that I want to show you, the main objectives and products in from vertical surveying. Uh, I show you the case of Menorca Cliff, the case of Castro Vido Dam, and the bridge inspection using Mavic 3 Enterprise and UGCS. And maybe we will see in future webinars about the uh, change detection based on point clouds comparison, 3D volume delimitation, geological joint patterns characterization, or infrastructure deformation analysis, or maybe talking about the other drones like Mavic 3 uh, multispectral or uh, the series that we're talking about, the Mavic 3 Enterprise series using uh, the Eurotica model and the UGCS software. So I wish that you uh, enjoy the webinar, the part of the natural cliff, the part of the dams, and that's all for my part. Thank you very much. Thanks, Roger. It was very helpful. And uh, I'm sure most of our audience have learned a lot for the inspection to the cliff and dam. Uh, okay, I, I just checked our question box. We received uh, actually a lot of the questions, but due to the limited time, we will use 10 minutes to uh, like go through every questions. And another questions which we didn't answer will be send the, uh, send the answers through mail. Okay, let's start from the beginning. I will, I will write the questions and uh, please Roger and uh, Christoph help me to answer it if it's a new part. Okay. Okay, the first question is uh, Kai converts the flight path of a manual flight of vertical surveying flying in DJI pilot to, to a flight plan to in UGCS. And uh, he also added uh -oh. the, uh, sorry, Christoph, there is some add up. Because uh, you can also, of course, import a flight plan from UGCS to the DJI pilot to add. Uh, now also is using the URL, but I'm 
uh, curious if there is also a way to import and extract a, fl a flight plan or manual flight from DJI Pilot 2 to UGCS. Please. Uh, actually, it's a really interesting question. Um, on the UGCS side, so what you can do, in fact, is uh, if you have the flight path in uh, KML format, so, you know, flight path, which can also be, for instance, shown in Google Earth, then in UGCS, yes, you can import it. And so from a KML file, uh, you are able to actually uh, create the uh, the flight plan because so uh, i am not sure if there is a way how it's possible from doing a manual flight with dji to extract a kml file of that flight uh, path trajectory so maybe you can comment a bit about this well as far as i know there is no such possibility uh and if there is not then uh, well i guess that's something that uh, maybe potentially would have some use for maybe uh, you can comment on the on this Yes, mm -hmm. um, when, when you record the video in the Mavic 3 Enterprise with the RTK model, uh, they will um, they record a UBIX file with the coordinates during the, the video. Or also, if, if you are doing a, a, a straight line flight plan, you can take a picture uh, at, the, at the start or at the end point, and then you have the latitude and longitude coordinates of this line. Uh, it, it's from a video, you have all the, the, the track, and you can convert it as KML, CCF, it's kind of a format necessary to then import at UGCS. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, I hope uh, our answer could feature, feature questions. Okay, let's move to a second. Uh, does the thermal camera option offer any advantage in vertical surveying? How do you think, uh, Roger? Uh, well, the thermal camera have a lower resolution, so for surveying, it's much better to, well, for photogrammetric reproductions, it's much better the fourth year sensor. Uh, but then if you want to create an orthophoto, like, for example, for fireworks, we want to create a thermal orthophoto. Yeah, for sure, it's useful. And also for inspection, uh, uh, photo, uh, solar plants, uh, for mm -hmm. sure, with a lower resolution, so you will have to fly it, uh, at lower height but you will get a uh, thermal or two photos, yes. But for 3D reconstructions, it will be better to combine it with a four-thirds camera or bigger sensor camera. Mm -hmm. Okay, next, can you explain what sort of accuracy you get uh, with the, and the without a GPS rover, DRTK? Uh, about the, like our equipment accuracy, uh, let me try to help with this question. Actually, the mapping accuracy is related to the GSD. And uh, if, we, if we're talking about the Mavic 3 Enterprise, the GCP3 situation, the accuracy is about uh, like two times of the GSD. Uh, and we can, uh, we can, for example, let's say at uh, 100 meter uh, flight height, the GSD is uh, 100 meter uh, and uh, 30, uh, 37, and the, which is a 2.7 centimeter accuracy is uh, within uh, 5.4 5, 5, centimeters. Um, okay, for further accuracy uh, questions about uh, our equipment, uh, we can also check it from uh, uh, our official website or mail, mail us. Okay, uh, and the next one. High grade presentation, but the one bad thing, I saw you nice videos and now I want holiday in the sun. Uh, just, a, just a joke. Thanks for the very informative show. The best enterprise webinar to now ever. Okay. Uh, thanks for the uh, sweet jokes and uh, uh, I'm planning to have a holiday uh, in the cliff bar, which is inspected by Roger. I trust his work. Okay. Uh, I, I, I can also resonate with that. Roger, your videos also make me want to take my next vacation uh, to Spain again. <laughs> yeah, big advertisement. Okay. Um, uh, Jack, uh, when I fly with my Mavic 3 Enterprise, a uh, will, uh, can I make a KML which I can export? In which folder is a KML file saved on the Mavic 3 Enterprise? This is uh, my question. Uh, we can actually find it from the remote controller file and uh, uh, DJI and mission, and you can find the KML file. 
Yes, okay, and uh, move to the next one. Um, uh, once you have created the mission plan into UGCS, then you export a KML file and import it into DJI Pilot 2. Did I make it clear? Uh, so maybe maybe I can. Yes, maybe maybe I can take this. So um, up until now, we've had and again, it's not a KML file. It's a it's a KMZ file that we had as a feature up until now. That yes, so if you had M3E drone, uh, you could plan the flight in UGCS. Then export the route to uh, DJI Pilot 2 format and put it on the remote controller. But so now, uh, what I also introduced at the beginning is that so that feature is still there. You can still create routes uh, for M3E export and using in UGCS. Now mm -hmm. we have made this a lot more convenient with the new version. So now you can basically connect directly from Pilot 2 to UGCS just by having both devices on the same network. And then there's even no need to export the route. So you can simply all the routes you have planned for that drone platform in EGCS, they will automatically be available for you in DJI Pilot 2. So all that's kind of left for you to do is uh, find the route which you want to fly, uh, save it to local storage on DJI Pilot 2, upload and uh, fly. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Christoph, for the patient answer. Let's go to the next one. Hello, does the Mavic 3 Enterprise support the continual mission in case of the signal loss? Uh, actually, that's, uh, let me try to get it. Uh, um, the Mavic 3 uh, Enterprise, actually, when we do our planning, after the, after the mission planning, uh, the, like, uh, the machine, machine go, go to the work, uh, if the, there is some situation like signal loss, the machine will automatically still go through every, uh, go through all the missions, uh, and also with the avoidance uh, ability. Um, so, Actually, in China, uh, some of some of the severe even just uh, do the mission planning and uh, try to smoke, and after a cigarette, several cigarettes, and the mission have done. So uh, I'm not sure this is the right answer. If if, if this, there is a like um, uh, further questions, there uh, feel free to also uh, mail us, and uh, you can find us from the website from the GoToWebinar site, our mail address. Okay, due to the limited time, uh, we will have to uh, close the questions session. And if there is another question, uh, we will answer them through mail. Okay, uh, in the end, we would like to thank all the attendees for your time and interest. And we hope that this experience shared today was useful for you. And we conclude this webinar and wishing you have a nice day and hope to see you next time. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Christoph and Roger. Yep, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah.